Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner, section 543, last section of this bit. Um, the question arises, when you have a magnetic dipole moment M vector, um, does it matter where the loop occurs, or is it, as long as it happens somewhere near the origin, it's, it's, an, it's unimportant far away from the origin? We found that with the electric fields that if you had a net charge of zero, then the dipole moment really it did not depend how close it was to the origin or if it was at the origin or whatever. And because there's no such thing as a monopole moment for magnetic fields, the answer is that it does not matter if, if the, the loop occurs at the origin or near the origin or anything like that. Um, the dipole moment will be the same. That's not to say that the quadrupole and octopole moments won't be the same. Um, and if you wanted to find a pure magnetic dipole, you can imagine taking a loop uh, of infinitesimal size with a current of, you know, infinite magnitude such that your m, um, so even though your area vector is tinier and tinier, the currents increase so the m maintains its, uh, its uh, the constant ratio there between the two. So um, you can imagine that's how a, you know, a pure dipole would look like. Um, so if we put the the loop at the origin, and uh, then we can calculate um, the the vector potential due to pure dipole. That would be mu naught over four pi uh, m sine theta, where theta is the angle of the. Um, this is in spherical coordinates. Theta is the angle between the vertical and the point in question and over r squared the distance and that's going to be in the phi hat direction okay now not surprisingly um, oh b equals the magnetic field of the pure dipole is just the curl of a which uh, when you work it out will be mu naught uh, over 4 pi m over r cubed and there's two terms that survive, two cos theta in the r hat direction, and then sine theta in the theta hat direction. Okay. So depending on how far from the vertical you are, you're going to get a different field. Now, if you were to draw out these fields, um, it would look almost exactly, well, yes, exactly alike um, when you compare it with a electric dipole. Um, I'm not going to attempt to draw it again here. Um, just trust me on this. So, and again, you, you have to think about what the difference between a pure dipole uh, versus a physical. A physical dipole has an actual area, whereas a pure dipole has no area. It's, it's the uh, infinitesimal limit as the area approaches zero. Um, a physical dipole has an area, and it probably has um, non-zero quadrupole, octopole, etc. moments as well. But, uh, the, of course, the dipole moment uh, dominates at distances far away from it. So, anyway, this is all for Chapter 5. You've, you've learned um, about magnetic fields. you learned how particles that are moving interact with those fields. You've learned how those fields are generated from a, a current. You've also learned about the magnetic potential, why we set the magnetic potential's divergence to zero, and all that fun stuff. So, I hope you've enjoyed Chapter 5. Um, next week, I'm going to get to work on Chapter 6 for you which is how uh, magnetic uh, fields interact with actual matter. Um, as you might guess, um, when you have an electron spinning around the center of a proton, it has a magnetic moment. So it's going to have an interesting um, consequences as we investigate that. So take care. Uh, take some time to work through these problems, especially the ones with the dot next to them. They're important. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.